our stomach has chewed up our chocolate bar and made it very acidic and ouch-like and now we have to pass it on into <laughs> duodenum and uh, the liver is going to do a dance for us. So that's our liver, uh, largest internal organ we have and attached to it is going to be the gallbladder, a little green guy on the bottom, right? Um, and that has liver two. has two lobes. Mm -hmm. The big huge one is on the right side, so that's called the right lobe, and the little pointy one is on the left side, so it is the left lobe. So pass along, Floyd can have his liver back. We're gonna look at this flat model, which kind of shows all of the pieces that feed um, all the fluid into the duodenum. So the liver is gonna be producing bile, and it is gonna be coming down from the lobes through, I'm gonna zoom in, so we can see this. Woo! All right, um, you're gonna see two ducts coming out of the liver. These are called the right and left hepatic ducts. So they are gonna come together to form the common hepatic duct as the gallbladder is also going to be you know, storing all the bile, concentrating it. It will be passing fluid down through the cystic duct and all of those are going to kind of converge as we hit the common bile duct. Now the common bile duct will be the longest. It will pass all the way down to where the pancreas is also putting its fluid into the mix. So remember the pancreas has the main pancreatic duct running right through it so that's the big one. It will meet with the common duct common bile duct. So common bile duct plus main pancreatic duct is going to equal this little fat guy right down here. Come on, focus little camera. There you go. Uh, this is called the hepatopancreatic ampulla. Wow. Isn't that a big one? That's so a big one. Learn to say hepatopancreatic ampulla. Um, notice it's a little bit fatter, which is why it's called an ampulla. This is going to be kind of storing the bile and all the intestinal um, enzymes coming from the pancreas that'll help us digest all of the good stuff really mm -hmm. and that will get released into the duodenum through the hepatopancreatic sphincter so just at the end there's a little spot where a muscle will open allowing that fluid to pass into the duodenum so that we can digest fat okay, which is the bile's job okay, and then we'll have some light bases for our fat digestion we will have some proteases and some more amylases to help mm -hmm. us with the proteins and the carbohydrates. Yeah, and, and pancreas also um, produces a lot of different enzymes as well, and it also neutralizes that acidic chyme that was coming out of the stomach so that we don't burn up our small intestine. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Now, if we look, there's one more model we have in the lab that is of the pancreas, and the reason I just show it to you is because at the end of it is the spleen. A lot of people get thrown off by that spleen, but it is still the pancreas. It's still going to have its main pancreatic duct dumping into the duodenum, and if you look kind of, I guess, on the side over here, you can see the hepatopancreatic ampulla and sphincter coming out right in there. So, um, One more model. And that is our large intestine. So we kind of went through all the pieces of the small intestines and the large intestines on Floyd. Um, but here we can narrow in a little bit on the great big fat thing that's draping over the center that a lot of you saw on the cat on your very first dissection day. Uh, this is called the greater omentum. omentum. This is what causes all the beer bellies, fellas. Uh, this little spot right here is going to store a lot of fat. It also helps to do a little bit of immune system work if there's any type of bacterial goo that gets around. Hmm. Yeah, it'll actually move to the base of an infection, like move like a little creepy guy from a creepy. movie. Yeah, that's what I think of it well, as. You learn something new every day. All right, so the large intestines has two little pieces on it that we can add to the cecum. And on this one, you can see the appendix pretty well. I'm going to flip him over. Yep, yep. There it is. A little, there he is, the big old appendix, um, which has almost no function. A little bit of immune system. A little system. bit of immune system. Um, but you can live very well without it. Yeah. Really, yeah. yeah. Um, so on the large intestines with the ascending transverse, descending sigmoid, etc., what you can notice all the way through is there are a bunch of bumps. 
Okay, so there are segments to the large intestine that are called the hostra, and this is going to help with our mass contractions to move the feces along in our large intestines. Mm -hmm. And there is also one big long tendon looking thing that runs along the entire thing. This is called the tenae coli. Um, this will help to kind of hold all those pieces together and push stuff along. You know what this reminds me of? Huh. It reminds me of those Venetian blinds that when you pull on the string, <laughs> the blinds go up. <laughs> you don't want to pull on your intestines. So well, your I mean, intestines you know, if you think up. about it, it kind of works yeah. that way. You, this this yeah. string pulls on these house straws and it and moves pulls the, the whole thing along. Eating lots of fiber makes these stronger. So. It's like it's like a... It's like a large intestine workout when you eat fiber. You need to clean everything out. Yeah, it's a good thing. The more thing. fiber, yeah. the more feces.